2020, years after Backbone, Knockout, and jQuery, the JavaScript war still rages on. The tribes of Angular, React, and Vue still fight for dominance. Nerds and dorks everywhere condemn non-believers and snare in the virtues of their own tooling preferences. There's no escape from the dominion of the JavaScript wars. That was super lame and I don't even care. So today we're gonna to talk about Angular and why I think it is the best tooling for building large applications, especially in the context of a team and especially when the application is really complex. So first of all, I don't wanna give off the impression that I don't like React or I don't like Vue. I think they're both great tools. Uh, I think they're really strong, especially when we're talking about building componentry. I think there's a lot of things that Angular offers though that makes it the clear choice when we're talking about building applications. <laughs> That's my dog's socket. She does not like Angular at all. She likes React more. <laughs> so first of all, the first class support that Angular has for TypeScript is huge. I know React has support for it and Vue 2 sort of has it. Uh, I think both of these are not quite there yet. Vue.js 3 looks pretty solid, but I think the Angular t uh, support for TypeScript is just perfect. Uh, it's fully supported, it's built natively in it, and it's not, it doesn't feel taped on, it doesn't feel tacked on, uh, what that get does to me for React and for Vue.js. So I know a lot of people who do like React and do like Vue uh, don't actually like TypeScript all that much, so this isn't really a big deal to them. But when we're talking about building large applications, I think it's really clear the benefits that TypeScript have over JavaScript. So you get typed interfaces, you get compile time errors, you get all the future ECMAScript tooling. There's a ton of tooling that TypeScript gives you that makes it much easier to manage a large code base. So another big feature of Angular that I like is that there's a prescribed architecture pattern given to you out of the box by Angular. So I think this is really important when you're talking about the context of building applications with a team. Uh, when you're using tools that don't have a prescribed framework, people tend to build their own and you know typically don't have the same vision as somebody else on your team. So you end up having these different styles built into your application and it's much harder to know exactly what to do inside of those kind of applications. And I've seen it happen before in code bases in this frameworkless kind of world where you have multiple visions that end up becoming a very convoluted code base. So this is also really important when working in an enterprise, when you're moving people from team to team, because now you have the same architecture on team A as you do on team B. All your code is structured the same. All of your uh, design principles match. You have the service layer, you have the component layer, you have your pipes and directives, and they're all doing the same thing that somebody on a different team is going to be doing with them. So another big feature of Angular to me is actually the CLI. So I know it's not really part of Angular, but it is a very important extension of the framework. So not only does it give you generators for your modules, components, for your tests, uh, for your pipes, for your services, and all that kind of stuff, but it also gives you the actual build tools that you need. So you get a, a development server watcher, you get a production build, uh, you get all the stuff that you would always need to build into a front-end application, whether you're using Angular, React, or, or otherwise. And you get that out of the box, and it's built by the Angular team, and it's not some sort of external tooling being managed by open source. So a huge benefit there is that you're now getting something managed by the actual framework team, and you're always in sync with the latest changes to the framework. So one big point of contention between people that like Angular and the people that like React is the general principle of what the tool is supposed to do. So with React, you have to take your view layer and then you gotta find the rest of your framework, right? You gotta go find your HTTP client, you gotta go find your router and all of those kind of tools. Uh, with Angular, you get all those out of the box. So while you may not get what you feel is the best of class in some scenarios, uh, you get all of it out of the box and you don't have to go piece it all together. So I think there's a significant amount of value in that because now your framework is always gonna have all these very important tools in sync 100% of the time. You don't have to manage all these different packages to make sure they all play together nicely. And I know it's not like these big libraries are falling apart every day or anything like that, but I think it's really important to be able to have all these tools that you're always gonna need in a front-end application readily available to you. And I know that a lot of people who liked the lightweightness of React and things like that hate the idea of this bloat, but to me, it is absolutely not bloat. You need these tools, you need to put them together in one way or another. Why not have a framework that gives it to you out of the box? So another piece of Angular that I like is that there's no state store required even for moderately complex applications. Uh, with React, I know you also don't need that, but that is absolutely the prescribed methodology that I see every time I see an application in React or Vue. There's always a state store uh, once you get past a small threshold, 
and that really gets out of control really fast. It gets really hard to manage. You gotta jump through all the hoops just to see what a button click does. And I realize that that's really nice when you're talking about uh, non-hierarchical componentry, but with a lot of applications, you don't really have that problem. And we start finding people taking this hammer that they found and trying to nail in every single React application with a state store when you just don't need it. And you don't have that problem in Angular because by default, you're using two-way or one-way data binding to pass your data from component to component. And I know this is more of a, this person used it wrong, don't blame the tooling, but when it's the, the ecosystem recommending using state stores and using Redux and things like that, I really think it is at some level the fault of the tooling itself. And I know there's a lot of pushback in the React world of don't use Redux if you don't need it. But at the end of the day, that's what people end up doing because that's what they're reading in tutorials. So those are the main reasons why I think Angular is the best choice when we're talking about building applications. I think all three are great options because no matter which way you go, you're gonna find a fantastic community backing all of it. And you're gonna find all the tools and support you need to build your application and do it very well. So one thing I do wanna say before I sign off is that there's this uh, idea that Angular is dying or it's going away and it is just simply not true. I don't know why this is so prevalent. I know the stateofjs.com survey came out and that had all sorts of problems and if you are interested in this kind of thing, you've probably read about it, but the main issue was that they combined the idea of AngularJS 1, which was a framework that was built many years ago in pure JavaScript and had a lot of uh, design choices that are now clearly outdated. And they muddied that together with the new version of Angular. And that caused a lot of responses to say they don't like Angular at all, they hate Angular or anything like that. And I also think that the Angular developers are typically more found in the enterprise communities. So you're not gonna hear as much from them as you do from people in the React and Vue worlds. So it kind of reminds me of .NET. Ruby on Rails, Python, Django, Node.js all blew up in the 2010s, but you still had a huge mass of developers writing .NET, very happily working in ASP.NET MVC, um, just not quite as loud as you see uh, the Node developers in Hacker News or on Reddit or things like that. So at the end of the day, no matter what tooling you're choosing, I really hope you love it because the people that are building these tools are working very hard to keep all these communities happy. At the end of the day, my choice is gonna be Angular. You may have a different choice and you're welcome to it. If you disagree with me, feel free to leave a comment and tell me how wrong I am. If you agree with me, feel free to leave a comment and tell me how awesome I am. And either way, just leave a comment, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.